that whenever you hear a faith story, whenever you hear somebody talk about, here's kind of how I feel like God's worked and moved in my life, whenever you hear a story, you always hear about relationships. I've never heard, and maybe this is your story, but you're the exception, I've never heard in isolation, on my own, I discovered God, grew in my faith in God, became everything God wanted me to be, and it had absolutely nothing to do with anyone in my life. I think if you think that's your story, you probably don't even know your own story very well. But generally speaking, when people tell their story, they talk about, they don't use this term, but they talk about providential relationships. And it sounds like this. You know, I was going along doing my own thing, and then I met this girl. I was going along, kind of doing life, whatever, and then I, re- I met this guy. You know, I was, everything was fine. Then these girls invited me to this, they call it a Bible study. I'm like, what is there to study, you know? But I didn't know anybody in the neighborhood, so I went and <gasps> for the first time, you know? Or, or I, I went to college and I found out one of my professors was a Christian and I thought, well, he couldn't be very smart. And then as I got to know a professor, I realized, wow, there's something to this. Something about his life kind of captured my attention and, you know, began a relationship. Or I, I went to work for this company and they told me the boss was a Christian. And I'm like, what's that about? Or my manager, or my division or department director or vice president. And I saw this guy or I saw this woman live her life in a different kind of way. And as I got to know him or her, I looking back, God just, I just feel like God just meshed our lives in that season of my life. And wow, my faith took off or my faith grew or that person rescued my faith. Whenever you hear faith stories, you hear about relationships. That's why we've made the case that one of the five things that God uses on a consistent basis in our lives to grow our faith are relationships that looking back seem to be providential relationships. And you know what? Again, it's sometimes it's a conversation. I mean, I've heard stories that their whole life changed around a conversation. For other people, it's a series of conversations. And then for some of us, we would say, you know what? It really wasn't anything they said. Their life, I just watched them live their life. I just watched them do marriage. I saw them prioritize their family. I saw them walk away from deals. I just, in our relationship, I saw them, you know, um, mirror a completely different value, set of values than what was in my life. And consequently, something happened in my faith and I began to think maybe there is a God. Maybe there's a God that would intersect with my life. And for some of us, we'd say we came back to church and some others of us would say we came for the first time because of a relationship with someone that, again, looking back, providentially, it seems like they intersected with our life. And and here's the principle and the point of of today's message. It's simply this, that God uses human relationships to impact our faith in Him. That's what it is, that God uses human relationships to blow up or influence or impact our faith in Him. Now, the opposite is true as well. This is a principle like all principles that works both ways. Because the other question I could ask you to answer today that would be a little maybe more awkward to answer. What if I ask this question? Has looking back, has there been anyone in your life that looking back undermined your faith in God? Did you, are there any relationships in the past and as you look back, they kind of took the legs out from underneath your faith? As a result of that relationship, you believed less? As a result of that relationship, you found yourself further from God and further from where you wanted to be in life and relationships or financially or in marriage? Isn't it true that oftentimes um, relationships undermine and have the potential to undermine our faith? Isn't it true that if you were really honest, your greatest regrets, if you were to trace them back, you would trace them back to a relationship, a phone call you wish you'd never returned, a text message you wish you'd never responded to, an invitation you wish now you'd said no to, a date you wish you'd never gone out on, a business opportunity you wish you'd walked away from. That our greatest regrets, generally, if you trace them back, you trace them back to relationships. I don't meet many people, and I'm sure there is this case, you don't meet many people who say, you know, my greatest regret has to do with isolation. I got into trouble all by myself and no one else was involved. That's a little bit hard to do. I'm sure it's possible. The habits that you have such a hard time breaking were probably introduced to you through a relationship. Why? Because relationships are powerful things. And here's the takeaway. They intersect with our faith for good or for bad, but relationships intersect with our faith. And that's why we can count on this for the rest of our lives, that God will use and has the potential to use and is willing and desirous to use relationships in our lives in order to build our faith. Because the wrong kinds of relationships have the potential to undermine our faith. The right kinds of relationships have the potential to build and to grow our faith. Now, 
The challenge is, what do you do with that? I mean, I doubt too many people would argue with me. I mean, you might, but for the most part, we have enough history to see that there really aren't any neutral relationships. Everybody you come into contact with in some way either erodes your faith in God or helps to build it. But if that's the case, what do you do? I mean, a providential relationship isn't something you can go out and do. You can't go out and enter. You just can't do it. It just it kind of happens. But he, here's why I think this is so important and worth talking about. I do believe this is something we can leverage. And I believe by being aware of the significance of relationships as it relates to our faith, we can leverage this principle. You may have been raised in a religious tradition and, and you've never heard anyone talk about this. In your religious tradition, faith was all about a Sunday morning event. Faith was all about someone reading something to you. Faith was all about your prayer life. Faith was all about you know, this personal, private, Sunday kind of thing. So consequently, you've never asked this question. How can I leverage current relationships for the sake of building my faith? And if you've never asked that question, you may be missing out, of on, missing out on one of the primary things God would like to do going forward to build and establish your faith. Now, th the other reason I feel like we need to figure this out and figure out how to leverage this principle for our good is that, you see, every single day, you are around people who could care less about your faith. You're around people every single day that have the potential, even though it may not be a reality yet, who have the potential to undermine your faith. And the other thing is this, every single day we live in a culture that is not pushing us toward greater faith in God, but away from it. Every single day we are introduced to circumstances and events and things on the news that remind us or make us think maybe God's not in control. Maybe I can't trust God. Maybe God's not faithful. Maybe I can't wake up every single day confident that God is with me in spite of what I see. I mean, the current of our culture is never toward good things. It's always toward bad things. And my nature tends to go that direction. I mean, maybe it's just me, but I'm rarely tempted to do the right thing. I mean, my temptations, and rarely do I think, well, you know, I really wasn't going to be kind, but oh, I just gave in and was kind anyway. I, that's not my experience. You know, I really didn't want to do the right thing, but I just couldn't help myself. I did the right thing. Okay. My nature and our culture moves me to, causes me to drift away from confidence and faith in God. So that being the case, if there is a leverage point relationally that will help build and establish and create greater confidence in God, I don't want to miss it. And here's what I believe is true. And I'm going to try to make this case in a minute. I think there are things that we can do to work with our Heavenly Father to create what you might consider looking back to be providential relationships. Because every, in every relationship you're in, you have a choice to make. And it could be that there are relationships that God is teeing you up for right now. And if you're not careful, you'll miss them. I, I imagine that most of us could look back on a time in our life, if, you know, if you've lived long enough, to where if you kind of accept this whole idea that God may bring people into our lives for a purpose, I bet many of us could tell stories of, you know, looking back a year ago or five years ago or ten years ago, there was a person who kind of came crashing into my life in a unique way. There was a person that was constantly trying to talk to me about God. You know, there was that person who kept wanting to have lunch with me. There was that couple that kept inviting me to church. And I just kept putting them off, putting them off, and putting them off. Perhaps that was God's way of trying to get your attention through this principle, through a relationship. But you had a choice to make. And you decided to walk away. What I want to try to encourage you to think about today is let's not do that anymore. If relationships can be providential, if God uses people to pump up and build and create greater faith, then we need to ask the question, how do I leverage that? How not, how do I not go another season of my life and miss that? I want to show you a couple of passages of Scripture. Actually, they're really just two verses. One's in the Old Testament and one's in the New Testament. And all these verses, the only reason I'm showing you these verses is they reiterate for us what our experience already tells us. That God uses people, that God uses relationships to impact and to grow our faith and to impact and grow our expressions of faith. The first one is found in the book of Proverbs. And this is a, a verse I think we've talked about before sometime in the past. I lose track. Proverbs 13, 20. And this is out of the TNIV. This is what it says. It says, walk with the wise. And in the original language, this is not a command. It's more an observation. It says, he who walks with the wise. Walk with the wise and become wise. For, explanation, a companion of fools suffers harm. Now, you don't have to be a Christian or a religious person or even that insightful of a person to understand the nature and the relationship reflected in this verse. 
that he who walks with the wise becomes wise, the companion of fools suffers harm. This goes back to what I said a minute ago, that your greatest regret was in the presence of other people, that your greatest regret stems back to, and you could trace your way back to a relationship. But here's, here's the promise of this verse. The wisest man in the world says this, that the people you choose to surround yourself with have the potential to impact your spirituality. That the people that you choose to spend time with because of the nature of what wisdom means in the Old Testament, that if you choose to walk with wise people, do life with wise people, surround yourself with the right kinds of people, that God uses that relationship to create something good in you. And in this case, in an Old Testament context, wisdom. That there is a spiritual component. And again, this, for some of you, this is not new. For others of you, this is a little bit of a new category. There is a spiritual component to relationships. And there has the potential to be an incredible spiritual component to relationships because God uses people to pump up and to grow our faith. The second verse is from the New Testament. And when I was in high school, we kind of had a joke about this verse. I'll see if you can figure it out. Do not, verse Corinthians 15, 33, do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good morals. And then we would say, yeah, but they have great music. No one, can anyone get that? No. Okay, okay. Yeah, three people here from the 70s. Okay, great. It, it, it was a band. Okay, bad company. All right, so that was our deal. They may, may, you know, they may corrupt good character, but rock on. You know, anyway, bad company till the day I die. Anyway, sorry. So the, the point Paul is making, the point Paul is making is simply this. And, and again, this is a verse that if you have kids, you think, oh, yeah, I need, my, I need to hang that in my kid's room. You know, bad company corrupts good morals. But what is he saying? He's saying this, look. That human relationships can have a negative spiritual impact. That human relationships can have a negative spiritual impact. Now, you may not be a God or religious person. You know relationships can have a negative impact. But God who loves you and has invited you to call him Father and who cares about your character and cares about your morality and cares about the consequences of decisions says, you know, it's more than simply common sense. There is a spiritual component to this that the wrong kinds of influences impact you in a way that create the wrong kinds of outcomes and the wrong kinds of behaviors. Why? Because there is a spiritual nature to relationships. And just as he who walks with the wise or she who walks with the wise has the potential to grow wise, so in the same way the companion of fools suffers harm and in the same way bad company corrupts good morals. Now, Again, we've all seen that in some way. The question is, if this is a, a principle that works for us or against us, if this is a principle that God wants to use to leverage, or if God wants to leverage a relationship in order to blow up your faith, what do we do? What is our part? And this, this is why we around here at all of our campuses and all of our partnerships and you know, all over the country where we're doing church together, this is why we are such fanatics about creating relational environments. I mean, we're just crazy about this. We spend a ton of time, money, and energy around trying to get people in circles and out of rows. And here's why. We, not because we think we can create a providential relationship. We can't. But here's what we've learned we can do. We can create the potential for a providential relationship. If you'll allow us to, we have the ability to create the potential for one of those God meetings, one of those God relationships where you look back a year from now or six months from now and go, wow, I, I, can't, I met her, I met him, I met them. We had this in common. And when I heard their story and all of a sudden I'm thinking about life on completely different terms. Why? Because of a relationship. And we know from experience that we can help create, kind of tee up, those kinds of relationships if you cooperate and if I cooperate. This is why, if you've been here for very long and seen some of our baptisms, when you hear the baptism stories, you always hear people talk about other people. Rarely or maybe never have I heard a baptism story that said, and then I met God and God revealed himself to me and me and God are cool and I just want to thank, well, I don't really want to thank anybody. I just want to thank God because it's all about me and God. Never. What you hear is, there was an individual, there was a person, there was a group, there was a starting point leader, there was an inside out group, there was a community group, there was a ladies group. Somewhere along the way, every one of these individuals says, part of what blew my faith up, part of what gave me the confidence to wake up every day and live my life as if God knows my name is because of what I learned and what I saw in the lives of these other people. 
That's why the way you, that's what, what I mean when I say leveraging this principle. The way we leverage this is to be intentional, is to be intentional about putting ourselves in environments where God may create a providential relationship, a providential meeting, a mind-boggling, wow, I can't believe I've gone this long without knowing that. I can't, you know, I can't imagine having lived life without meeting you and inter- our lives intersecting. That God is willing and able to do that, but we have a part to play because you always have a choice in relationships. And the part that you can play and that I can play is by being intentional about putting ourselves in a position where those relationships might happen. That's why if you're single, you need to go to fusion. You say, well, I went to fusion once. You need to stay involved in fusion. You never, because that's what, you know what you're saying? You're saying, God, I can't create a relationship. I can't make something happen. But God, I'm going to do my part and I just trust that you'll blow my faith up big through some relationships that I've yet to establish. This is why if you're a married couple, you need to be somehow in a community group. If you're exploring faith, please just don't sit here and listen to me preach week after week. Please get in a, get in a starting point conversation. Because in a starting point conversation, you don't simply get content. You meet people and you interact and you begin relationships. And God uses relationships to blow up and grow up our faith. You know that to be the case because you've seen the other side of relationships. This is why if you have kids, listen, if you have children, you need to get them in a circle where another adult is speaking into their lives. I promise you, I promise you the day will come when you wish they were in that environment. But I also promise you this, if you wait until you feel the need for it, it is too late, baby, baby. It is too late. You can just put a period behind that, okay? It's too late. What you need, the best thing you can do for kids is to get them in a group of relationships that as time goes by, God may providentially connect them to a group leader or to someone in that group that gives them a brand new vision of faith and of life. And you can't wait till the 11th grade. Now is the time to do that. It's not about a church program. It's about teeing up potential relationships that God may use in an extraordinary way to blow up and to pump up somebody's faith. Why? Because God uses our human relationships to grow our faith in him. God uses human relationships to grow our faith in him. 